HP's big news for CES 2023 is a new line of consumer-facing laptops called the Dragonfly Pro. Now that word sounds familiar, it's because the company already has a more enterprise commercial series called the Elite Dragonfly. The concept behind the Dragonfly Pro and the Dragonfly Pro Chromebook, which are the first pair of notebooks to launch in this series, is that consumers, HP thinks, don't want to be overwhelmed with specs and components and configurations to choose from. So it's making the decision process kind of simpler by removing some of those configuration options. Starting with the HP Dragonfly Pro, this is an AMD powered system, no Intel version available here. You can get it with either 16 gigs or 32 gigs of RAM and choosing between those two options will also determine the amount of storage you get, which is respectively 512 and one terabytes. By removing too many of those configuration options, HP believes it's gonna make things less overwhelming for the average consumer, not the spec obsessed sort of PC geek. Both the Dragonfly Pro and the Dragonfly Chromebook use 14-inch screens and on the Windows system, this can go up to 400 nits of brightness. It runs at 1920 by 1200 and is a touchscreen. Of course, this is an LCD, so it's not necessarily the greatest color and contrast ratio quality that we're used to on OLEDs, but it should also give you better battery life. In fact, HP is promising all-day battery on the HP Dragonfly Pros. On the Windows machine, part of that is thanks to a collaboration with AMD. Now, the HP Dragonfly Pro uses a custom Ryzen 7 chip that was designed in partnership with AMD. And together, the two companies also worked on its PMF, the Performance Management Framework, to keep things running at a lower, less power-intensive level than what HP said is normal for other systems so as to conserve battery when you're not doing anything overly taxing. The system will also ramp up the performance for when you need short bursts of power for your multitasking, for example. What I find to be one of the more interesting features of the HP Dragonfly Pro, though, is a row of hotkeys on the right side of the keyboard. This is basically four buttons in a vertical column to the right of the return key, and respectively, from top down, they are control center, 24-7 help, camera settings, as well as a programmable key. The control center will allow you quick and easy access to some of HP's settings, which historically have been kind of buried in other HP apps all over the place. In future, HP envisions this place to be the one-stop portal for controls to things like HP printers, for example, or your webcam settings. For now, we were looking at pre-production units as well as software that was not yet ready to launch. So take what you're seeing and hearing about with just a little bit of grain of salt. The second button, for example, is supposed to pull up immediately the live 24-7 concierge that HP is also launching with the Dragonfly Pro series. This will offer you immediate access to actual people, actual agents, not bots. These people have been specifically trained to be experts in these two laptops and some of the HP accessories. So hopefully they'll be able to assist you when you just don't know what is wrong with your laptop. That seems straightforward enough. The third button too is also an intriguing use case. So this is the camera or video settings key and pushing it brings up HP's camera app. It's not named yet. It will be named at launch around spring and it will offer you system level controls over what camera feed is being sent out to your apps like Zoom or Meet and stuff like that. We were able to tweak the intensity of background blur. We were able to do things like key framing. This seems like a very well thought out app. Again, a pre-production version, so I can't tell you just how well it will work on the laptop that finally ships, but so far it seems like a very thoughtful feature. And finally, I really like that you get a programmable key in this row of hot buttons on the right side of the Dragonfly Pro. You can do things like launch an app, launch a website with your default browser, or a file or folder, for example. I still wish there was a way to do a macro where you can do a row of key press functions, but it's better than most laptops. So here at our demo, pressing one of these buttons did take a while before some of the apps would actually show up and launch. That could be a mix of reasons. This is, like we said, pre-production units. 
the Wi-Fi here could be spotty. There could be several reasons as to what's causing the delay, so I don't want to ding it too much or be too concerned about it just yet. But you know, it's important to note that when you're looking at us press the button, there is definitely a pause and we notice it too. Moving on to the HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook. This is a 12th generation Intel Core i5 powered Chromebook with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. This is a version of Chrome OS that HP has worked with Google a little bit on to offer you some Android-like touches. Specifically, this is kind of like Material U. We've got a wallpaper that when you change it, Google has a sort of API that it has offered on this Chromebook as well to find the dominant color in the picture and spit out a bunch of cues to choose from. When you go into HP's settings app for this, you can use the color in the wallpaper to match to the lighting on the keyboard. That's right, there's an RGB keyboard on this Chromebook. This is, according to HP, the world's first RGB lighting on a non-gaming Chromebook. Again, a lot of qualifiers there for a world's first claim, but it is eye-catching. I really like the look of it. I wish we had more control over individual keys and what colors they showed, but you can choose what color you want these lights to show, or you can let the wallpaper determine for you, or you can have it set to just display a rainbow. This is attractive, I love it, I'm not a gamer, but I just like the colors anyway. It's one of the standout features of the HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook. The other standout feature here is that because HP envisions this Chromebook to be used mostly by content type creators, people who are always on the go, most of their work is being done in the browser, so they decided to make the LCD screen here super bright. In fact, it can hit up to 1200 nits of brightness, making it easier to see outdoors. Unfortunately, the Chromebook doesn't have the row of hotkeys that the Dragonfly Pro Windows version does. And that kind of makes sense. I guess Chrome OS doesn't really have the same settings and the access to programs that a Windows machine does. Both these systems have roomy trackpads. I was able to use them and drag things around. Multi-finger gesture support is there. It's supposed to be a haptic trackpad. I will say I haven't felt anything haptic feedback yet, uh, but depressing any part of the, the touchpad felt surprisingly responsive so far, and I can press at any part of the trackpad too. The keyboard, while looking very shallow, actually offered some satisfying response, again, on these pre-production samples. So really, we'll have to wait till we get actual review in this up before we can know for sure. It has four. USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports on there, so you can get really connecty on these things. Finally, if you care a lot about looking super sharp in your webcam, feed, or photos, you'll be happy to learn that the Dragonfly Pro Chromebook uses an 8 megapixel webcam, and that's sharper than the 5 megapixel one found on the Windows machine. Of course, 5 megapixels is a lot less than 8 megapixels, but compared to the 1080p or even 720p webcams that are out there right now, 5 megapixels is a lot. I do wish that the HP Dragonfly Pro and Pro Chromebook were as thin and light as their enterprise counterparts, the Elite Dragonflies, because these felt a little hefty. I mean, they're 14-inch systems, sure, but holding up one with one arm to get B-roll of for our video really started to weigh down on my one hand. I will say these are not super thin and light machines, but they're not terrible. They feel very dense and very solidly built. Although there have been some interesting decisions made here, like the choice to go AMD only on the Windows side and use a 12th generation Intel Core i5 for a Chromebook, ultimately the Dragonfly Pro series looks intriguing. What it will boil down to is the price, and because we won't know that until the spring, we can't really say for sure. So for now, this has just been an intriguing preview of things to come. For more news out of CES 2023 and for coverage of the world of consumer technology, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And until next time, stay warm and don't get sick.